All right, we're talking about the big upcoming art selling holidays. And then, of course, uh, any and all questions you have, we're answering them live. Nick with me here today should be pretty fun. Make sure we're streaming everywhere, and then I can go and pin my comment. I want to talk a little bit about the fact that the art selling holidays are coming up because it's our constant job to remind everybody that they are coming up and that you, you do not want to miss them. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to be answering any and all questions live. Uh, question. Can you talk for a second? Make sure I can hear you. Yes, got it. We will answer. All right, what's it? Instagram? What are you doing, guys? We will answer. All right, let me pin this. Boom, boom. We can get right into it. You know that. You know the interesting thing about doing these lives is, if you feel like you have a big reel on your hands afterwards, you have to have a great hook to go right into it. Otherwise, if it's just a live, you just start talking and say, "All right, live Q and A per usual." Um, you know, before we get into the the finer points, like we run about nine of these sessions internally. What's up, Justin? We run about nine of these sessions a week internally uh, with myself, other members of my marketing team, um, co-pilot team, because we find that like all artists and photographers are solopreneurs. They have to wear all the hats all the time. Uh, you're the art creator. You're the product creator. Uh, 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 you are the, mar the head of marketing. Uh, 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 you are the head accountant, you're head of advertising, you're the bookkeeper, uh, you're shipping and receiving and your customer service. Okay. It's really, it's really, really hard as an artist to be alone without having ongoing, continuing support to where you are in your journey. You've got questions, questions about how to approach a gallery, questions about, uh, uh, negotiating, uh, pricing, pricing at, at large, uh, uh, how to leverage QR codes, all of these various different things. And quite frankly, Nick, they need the emotional support too, because we all do. We all do, you know, and let's just, let's just like all pause on that topic right now. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to say to all of you guys that are, that are listening to this, um, all of you artists out there and, and all like you're all entrepreneurs either building your own business or trying to build your own business. And it's like, God, sometimes it sucks, you know, mm -hmm. like, let's just say it. Yeah. And, and it's like, it, 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 we all gotta, we gotta share in this together. Like, you know, like it, there was a guy, I, I gotta pull up the screenshot and I'll find it in a second. And you know, some other entrepreneurs, and this is entrepreneurship. This is just how it is. It's not in the art business alone. It's important to say this. It's just any business owner, you know, it could be a plumber trying to get start his builders from build business from scratch, you know, or an artist and any type of artist, whether you're like a sculptor or a painter or a photographer. And it's like the usual Pat, you know what the usual cadence is? It's like nine punches to the gut to one. <laughs> yeah, that's really what it is. Maybe even lower. You know, so like for all of you guys, am I wrong? Like this is this is reality. Yeah. This is what reality is. And having started you know, a handful of businesses like I have, it's like, I, I, I just know, I know that that's it. And it's like early on, I was like, what am I doing? Like, is, this is crazy. Like, am I trying to put myself into a depression or something like that? But you know what? The more that you learn about the realities of entrepreneurship, it gets better. You know, yeah. like it just, it, it's, it doesn't mean that you don't have the punches in the gut. It just means like that feeling of not being alone and, and, and going like, wow, I guess this is what everybody's going through that's trying to do this. It, it feels a lot better. It really, it really does. You know, it helps. When you're all alone on an island thinking like, I suck or like, why is it me? Like, why are they? You know, Maybe it, I'm not good enough. Maybe this should have been a hobby. The pain. Yeah, exactly. Maybe it should, just yeah. Be, it just should have been a hobby. And then, you know, of course, what happens next, right? Like that, that day you're having a bad day is always the day that you find out about somebody else's like huge success and win. And you're yeah. like, oh, it just hurts even more, you know? Yeah. But yeah. it's not that that person, it's not that you're not happy for that person at all. Sometimes you might not be, right? But it's not like mm -hmm. you're really feeling that way. It's really that, you know, that other person has gone through and toiled through. That's what you always find out, that they've been through all the hell to get to where they've gone through. And it's just a process, you know, of, of getting through it and not quitting, you know? And so the more that we can be honest about it and share that with all of you guys, the longer you're going to last, the more you're going to be like, you know what? I got to take it easy on myself. So I just want to tell you guys, be easy on yourself. It is a hard journey. It's usually 10 punches to the gut to that one win. And when you get that one win, that positivity, it can be the smallest thing. Really celebrate it. 
really let your mind focus on that, on that one thing and go, God, I got, I learned something today, you know, or I got a positive comment or a positive review, or I got an order or something positive happened, you know, or maybe it happened yesterday, or maybe it's going to happen tomorrow and give yourself credit for it, you know? Allow yourself to be happy with it. Get those wins and let those wins put fuel in your tank to help you get through. Yeah, all of it is normal. And like, you know, it's like one of the primary things that we end up doing as a business is just bucking up our customers because the ones that don't quit are the ones that win. Um, shout it's out to your fun. It's a marathon, yeah. not a sprint. No, 100%. And, and we're going to continue coming with the positivity because we all need it, right? We all need to lift each other up. And it's just such a huge part of this entire journey. Um, great question from Dwayne. And shout out, Dwayne. I know you've been coming on to a bunch of these answering, asking questions. And I appreciate you for it because Nick and I like asking the questions and not just having dead air, right? So he says, I package and ship my own prints. Uh, I include a written note about the photo. What other marketing materials can I include in the shipment to the customer? Um, it's a great opportunity, number one, to write a thank you note. Okay. And, and, and insert that in there. So you're writing a note about a print, write a quick thank you note about the print on the print itself or on the thank you note itself, put your phone number, put your cell phone number every single solitary time and say text call anytime you have questions. Very, very, you want to make it very, very easy to get back in touch with you. And then I also, you know, so much of the marketing that we talk about is in the digital context. And when, when we say it's in the digital context, what we really mean is it's being consumed on this. Okay. The only time when QR codes don't work is when it's being consumed on this. Because last I checked, you can't turn your phone around and take a photo of the screen of the QR. But guess what? Anytime something's being delivered, this is where QR codes are just tremendous. And so one other thing you can put in there, Dwayne, is you could get, you, you know, you can go to this to print for this. And I think you can get like, Nick, you can get like a thousand of them for like 60 bucks. But you can you can design up a thing at Canva or something that says, uh, as a way of saying thanks for this order, scan this QR code at any time for 15% off your future, your next order. Very, very yeah. easy thing to do. Yep. Um, but I love, I love the handwritten thank you note. Like, you know, those things, those things have never ever been out of style. If you're just joining, you've got an art marketing related question. Uh, we're answering because uh, that's what we like to do. I've got another one um, here for us, Nick, and it's um, what type of music audio do you recommend playing while pairing on Instagram Live? I keep getting kicked off, and I don't want to get banned temporarily. Yeah, so you should be able to play any music you want on an Instagram live. Okay. Because it's just in the background and you're not turning it into an ad. If you turn it into an ad, then they're going to have issues with the music that you're playing. But that's a great question because I've never played music in the background of a live. And for context, Nick, they do one of the things we encourage, but they do the live painting or they're yeah, just in the absolutely. zone. They want, they want to hear the music going in the yeah. background, you know, while they're in the zone. I, I've seen, I've, I haven't seen issues. I see DJs all the time that are just playing songs of other artists. Mm -hmm. Like that's a big thing, you know? And so I don't think there's an issue with that. If, if you've, if you've experienced an issue, um, let us know, but Patrick's right. It's when you try to turn something into an ad, like they are very, like they start looking at everything when you try to put something into an ad. Yeah. That's where you get, that's where you get into big, big trouble. Uh, this is such a great question. Uh, Simeon, this is totally part of the deal totally normal and you know the 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 amazing thing the amazing thing and so like how many of you guys artists are out there in this situation okay that you've created a body of work you think it's good you think it'll sell but you've never done any marketing and you've never got it in front of any eyeballs so you don't know if it will sell if it won't simeon here okay he's doing a ton of work he's got the art in front of eyeballs he's doing posts he's doing carousels he's doing reels and none of the work is selling do you know what he's found out He's actually found out he might have some work that's not selling. And it, while that doesn't sound like much, that might even sound deflating. You have no idea how positive a step that is because there's other people that are on this Instagram live. They're going to spend the next 10 years of their life not knowing. How Maybe many longer. Artists, how many artists that we know that have been around for five or 10 years have never really marketed their art or anything going and they don't know. on the wrong path? Yeah. And, pay, you know, and like, or maybe they, maybe they sell one or two things and they just keep you know, painting or shooting the same type of material. And then when they finally go after it, they realize the big body of work that they did, like, isn't really going to sell and there's no market for it, you know, or the market size is so small that your potential revenue is just, there's a ceiling right above your head and you didn't know it was there the whole time. And so what, what, uh, Simeon is, it has done like, congratulations on that Simeon. Like you deserve, like it's hard, but you deserve a lot of credit because you're way further along. And I love your mindset on it. You know, you, you went after it, you started marketing your stuff 
And now you're getting real feedback from the market. And this is where you can start adjusting. You know, yeah. this is where we talk about like the custom artwork strategy. Like that's a big one, Simeon, because what you're experiencing is what most artists experience. It's that you picked a niche and you're trying to see if it's going to sell and you might be facing some resistance. You might not have just marketed enough. You might just need some more time. You know, you might need to grow your audience more. Um, that's that's definitely uh, could be a part of it. But while you're doing that, you should be trying some other subject matter, you know, and the way to get there or one way to get there is through the custom artwork strategy. Okay. And so um, without going into all the details about what that is, it's something that you can do immediately and today. And for anybody that's interested in that, just drop a comment on this post custom, and we'll send you a DM back with a link to the custom artwork strategy. Okay. And it's free. It's totally free. And it'll help you get through this problem and hopefully get a sale today and hopefully start getting some real information about what direction you should go based upon what your audience is telling you that they actually want. Ding, ding. That's a way to, you know, the, the quickest way you're going to get sales. Also, shameless plug, but they're, they're important. Okay. Um, two things. One, why isn't this, why isn't this reflecting in real time? Something happened. Okay, um, while I'm re-pulling this back up because I don't know what happened, um, Simeon, two things. One, on the podcast, I want you to go listen to two episodes, okay? Count them two. One is the either the very first episode or the second episode, which is Bill Stidham, and he was talking about he was at the absolute end of his rope, exact same situation you're in where he keeps creating, keeps creating, not getting any traction on anything. He was doing in-person fairs and shows, thought he was going to quit, the last dying gasp right when this, the boat was about to sink he tried his he tried his next style and his next style took off so that's one really really positive note it's like we have this tendency to think like internalize all of it and like oh it's all me it's all me like i'm the one i'm the one that that's not good enough or i can't figure this out and it's like it's a game of archery you have to continue firing the arrows but another one of these things like that i get blown away i mean it, it's near 10 years now nick in this business and we keep we keep learning more and more and more right and we have some artists that were in the exact same scenario as you were okay with a body of work and they're like you know what this this is just not selling and i'm trying to get the visual aid up so i can show it this isn't selling this is not working like i need to quit and one of them nick is meg okay? yeah and what's yeah. what's what's interesting about her story is that and this completely backs up my like art sales are 50 50 point she was absolutely bombing with this one style of work okay like not making enough sales she was like in a booth you know and and, and again it's in the podcast she like down to her, she was down to her last dollars yeah down yeah. to her last dollars but where 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 i was going with the story and by the way all of this is in the art marketing podcast if you guys have never listened to it it's in spotify it's in um Apple podcast. And all you have to do is search for Bill or search for Meg because we get a lot of episodes in there. But what I wanted to show you, so I'm going to buck you up is like, so this is Meg's site and let me get it up. Um, these were, this was the style that took off for her. Okay. Where these Jayhawks that like got her on the map and like really gave her like a, 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 a shot of the wind at her back, you know? And after she got it, what she found out like three or four years later, she has this like series of bison down here. And she's a Midwest gal, so she's selling Midwest art. So she has this series of bison. And what she'll tell you is like now that she's like six or seven years into like active marketing and promotion, has made a little bit of a name for herself. These things are selling. These things are now selling the body of work where she's like, I am going to quit. I'm done with this. I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. And so I've seen both scenarios happen. And it's this delicate balance, Nick, between have I got it in front of enough eyeballs to actually know? Maybe I have, maybe I haven't, but also I need to be trying different subject matter material. But it's so interesting to see that like years down the line, the exact same stuff you were about to quit with, all of a sudden it's like 10 to 15% of your bottom line, sometimes 20% of your bottom line, like it's yeah. wild, it's wild. And that and that pattern is is very common, right? It's like, it, it's like an analogy to it, you guys, is like you go to a really, really good restaurant, like a great chef, right? But you, mm -hmm. you tend to order the same thing. You might co go there for like the steak. Okay. But you mm -hmm. go enough, you, you know, you, you, you start going down the menu and it's like, you've tried the duck, you've tried the fish. You might try some of these other dishes and you're like, oh my gosh, but it was that steak or whatever. Cause it might've been a steakhouse that got you in the door and got you there. 
And now you're trying the other things on the menu, the second thing on the menu, the third thing on the menu. And so this is exactly what happens. So you might have, you know, content. And that's why you got to be unemotional about like, well, I don't want to do that. You know, like you got to try to, to like to understand that the work that you might really be passionate about and love might actually be the second thing on the menu. And you need that leader up there, that subject matter that has like wide appeal. Great, dude. That's, that, a cool, that's one of your best analogies that, that you've, done, you've come up with in years, by the way. That is so strong. Hey, thank you, sir. Thank you, yeah. sir. Uh, <laughs> I'm normally the analogy guy, but that was a really good one. Yeah. But you, do you know what I mean though? It's like, yeah. it's the, it's so, you know, companies ca sometimes call this a loss leader and I don't want to use that terminology, but for some of you guys who want to like get academic about it a little bit, some companies, big companies have what's called a loss leader. And I'm not telling you to have a loss leader. What they do is they actually have a product that deliberately bring you, brings you in the door. It's like, you know, who's famous for this? It's like Target and Walmart and like a lot of their ads all they, retail. They, they all advertise retail. an item that they will either break even on or lose, or money, lose money in some cases. Right? Yes. Because they know as soon as they get you in that door, you're going to, you're going to walk by and there's going to be like an end cap, you know, sort of thing where it's like they're, Oh, this, you know, this whole thing of sweatshirts is 50% off and you, and you get, Oh gosh, before you know it, you grab the sweatshirt before you know it, you grab this and you grab that. And they got you at the door with three other items and the loss. So okay. And, uh, and so in this case, it's like, it's not about having a loss leader because that's not what you want to do, but it's understanding that there might be something highly marketable that you can take advantage of and you get them in the door and then you get them to your second item and your third item after that, after that. That's exactly what Patrick just showed us right now. She used the Jayhawks, which are way more marketable, easy to resonate with, with people. And then the rest of her content is selling. And, and it's like, you, you look at it, you know, and, I, and I've talked to Meg about this. It's so fascinating. Because it's like, you know, she sits there and she's like, why was this stuff not selling before? And it's selling now. And it's selling now. It's, it's just, this is the way that it goes. You get the people in the door in the restaurant, you know, and then they're buying the other stuff. If you had, if, if the restaurant only had those other items and didn't have the steak, in my example, you wouldn't have got people in the restaurant in the first place. Okay. I.e. So they, 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 they don't know you playing exist. chess, not checkers. Yeah. I.e. I, they don't know you exist. It, it, it's it's one of these fascinating things that like no one ever tells you and like most people don't learn, right? Um, dog face paint, I love this. Hit a follower goal. Did you get to the thousand? Um, what are you doing? And and thanks for listening to the content since January. Uh, huge thanks on that. We love we love hearing that. But let us know how many followers you hit. Um, Troy Dean Photography, what is the monthly fee after the first big startup? It just depends on what plan you're on, Troy. If you haven't gotten a demo, go get a demo. We've got so many bells and whistles and so many things to show behind the scenes that you know, it makes sense for anyone, whether you guys decide to sign up for our storefronts or not, understand the whole program, the whole platform, the whole package. It takes an hour to go through the Zoom session and get the demo. And then you'd be so much more knowledgeable about everything that happens. Um, that's 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 how it would go. This is interesting. So other people are saying that happened to me often. They use music without words. And sometimes that the copyrights, you know, will cause your live to end. I didn't know that Kim was saying that. Thanks for that, Kim. I think um, try to stay away from the copyright music, but I really understand if it's like your jam. You know, if it's your jam, then you got to rock the, you got to rock the wireless headphones, you know, like you need, you need it to paint. Right. But I, I get it on a live broadcast because it'll set the mood, right. It'll set the mood and like, you know, and, and, and then you're water skiing on, on someone else's content. I get that. Um, this is interesting. Do we, we should look into this. Is there an option to send a thank you note or have an artist name included when the open edition prints go out to customers? Um, no, there's not. Uh, not as of right now, but you have all your customer information, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so, um, you can, you, you've got their address, you've got everything. And so you can just send something right to them. Like if you want to send a thank you note by mail, obviously that's really cheap to do. You can send whatever you want. Yep. Paizan, I love this. I love this comment. You, you want to know why I love this comment? It's like, okay. I just want you all to know. If you ever offer some sort of trial authors, your mount up front is a tough pill to swallow as you would, you'd be my first, you know, site selling prints. You're in the free trial right now, Python. You're in the free trial right now. That's why, that's why, that's why we do this. So like Nick and I have been joking, like this gives you an absolute window into what we do every single solitary day internally for our customers nonstop, because it's, it's the one thing that all artists need. All artists, all photographers have a marketing problem. It doesn't go away. That's it doesn't right. go away. It, the problem doesn't go away. Even if 
social media in today's day and age did not move the goalposts like this and up in here and down. You know, I mean, it's hard enough that just keeps one's head wrapped around all of those changes. Uh, is it is is it is anything else? We um, built we built art storefronts, and we just to give you some insight into the thinking. We built art storefronts, and we build art storefronts under the premise of how hard it is just in general to build your own business. We know it. We're entrepreneurs ourselves. And, uh, and so everything is based around that premise. Like you need mentors, you need people to talk to, you need other people to talk to. There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, things are changing. Marketing is changing all the time. It's just reality. That's just what we've chosen to do. And you realize that, you know, just having a website, um, and other website, you know, uh, other website companies and, and many of them are like, you know, generic website, like Squarespace or whatever, you can get a website, but it's like, that's not the business. The business is like everything that happens that you have to do to get eyes, eyeballs on your art and running things and your strategy, you know, and all of that different stuff. And so um, it's, you know, when you start seeing, seeing what's really, what it really entails, you realize that all, all these things are just tools. It's like buying one hammer, you know, it's like buying a hammer in your tool chest and you've got nothing else. You got no screwdrivers, you got no saws. Here I am with all the analogies today, Pat. I don't know what's going on here. You've yeah. inspired me. You're drinking my Kool-Aid. Um, everybody too asks for like a free trial, and then I see all the rest of your guys' questions. There is no free. There is no trial. Like no, that's no, 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 it's not. It's it, like look. This is the issue. It, it's like come on, free trial of like three months, six months, nine months. Like do you that's, understand? This takes three to five years. That's that's three to I'm five saying. years. That's yes. the whole point. It's like yeah. you, there is no trial in starting a business. You know, like no. It, 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 you're just going to try it. You, you know, you, you're not, you're not going to put, you're not going to have your product out there. You're not going to get enough eyeballs on it. You're not going to have a chance to iterate on your talent with a different subject matter, which is, you know, 80, 90%, almost hundred percent of the time going to have to happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because it's, there's the odds of you guessing immediately that what your right subject matter is. And when I say, right, it doesn't mean you might not get a couple of sales, but you might not get to the level that, that you're expecting because your market size of the subject matter is a guess. And you don't know if that's like a hundred thousand dollar a year business, a million dollar, a $40 million a year business, or a $0 a year business. And you have to figure that stuff out. And so, you know, that's uh, that's, that's kind of the answer to that, right? There, there is no trial. And so yeah. we're, we're, we're trying to help people who, you know, are, are, are committed to trying to do something, even if it's making side income and we will, you know, put in the time and energy to invest in you to try to help you become successful. But we're trying to, you know, make it as, uh, as reality of a package that it is at a, the most budget friendly price we can to, you know, give you everything that you need to succeed. Yeah. And, 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 and that's not a promise of success at all. You know, like a lot of people love to be like, well, you know, guarantee that it's like, no, it's like, it, it's, you, you, you have your product and the best that you can get is, as many of the tools and the wind behind you as much as possible, but you know, you've got to do it at the end of the day. Yeah. And we have a ton of questions. I see the questions coming in. We're going to get to every single solitary one. I promise. Um, one Jeff was asking about the podcast right now. We're on a cadence of once every two weeks. This is what it looks like. I, I wasn't screen sharing before it's on, um, Spotify and Apple podcasts. That's where most people listen, but it's anywhere you get podcasts. One final thing on like the, the free trial or the trial, the trial offer, any of the rest of that, like, People in this inside this company that talk on the phone sometimes get really angry at me because I will tell you, like, I don't want you thinking in your mind that becoming a successful artist or a photographer is let me just dip my toe in and see what the water feels like. Okay. You have that mentality. Don't do anything about it. Just keep it as a hobby because you're going to lose. You're going to lose. You have to swan dive. Okay. Belly flop swan dive into the deep end of the freezing cold water and know that it is going to take you a couple of years of suffering and grinding to get there. And, and you, know you can what do I, it on the side. You can yeah. do it on the side, but you have to have that mentality. Go ahead. Sorry. You, you have that. And, and what I find when I, when, when, when I like tell my customers that are like about to become customers and sign up instead of coming in with this expectation that like, they're so awesome that they created art that everyone's just going to discover it. They're going to have this huge business. They come in realizing like, okay, I want this. This has always been my dream. I want this to provide income for me. I know I've got a mountain to climb. Show me where to step. And then I'm like, what's up? We're Tenzing Norgay. I'm ready to guide you up this mountain, right? I'm ready to guide you up this mountain. Um, 
good one here. Okay. And, 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 and I know, I know you're still uh, uh, into the barrel photo. You're still dying for an Instagram, uh, uh, a teardown. I told you I would give you one of those all things in good time, but let me read it, Nick. And then you can go, how much balance should I put into music related photography post versus nature based photography post? I'm more well known and have more fans on the concert side of the music side, uh, but wanted to, uh, you know, basically build up more nature work. It's a great question. Yeah. So, I mean, I am all about what is the market actually, you know, what signals are you getting back from the market? And mm -hmm. that's the direction that you should go. Signals, meaning when you post, you know, the music, are you selling it? You know, uh, the music work, are you selling it? Are you getting engagement? Is that what your audience is kind of telling you they want? That's the feedback from the market. You know, yeah. when you post the nature, what happens? Okay. Is it the same response? Is it different? Is it crickets? You know, is it overwhelming? Like this is the whole process of testing subject matter, you guys. And like how quickly when Pat's talking about firing arrows, I gotta, I gotta like crimp in here, firing different arrows. It's like, so what subject matter ideas can you come, can you add to a list? Like on a yellow right. pad, you sit That's out there and you're just like, okay, I'm going to try this, this, this. And these are all different markets, right? Each one of those that you try is an arrow. Okay. So you paint something new or you shoot something new or whatever it is, and you try those different things. And then you, tr and then you, you pay very close attention to the market's response. Okay. And that's where you should be investing more of your time and energy is like, you know, we're hoping that you test a bunch of different stuff because one of them might be the one that just goes boom. Cause that's what we see. That's, that's, that is what we see. We see artists for years not doing this, eventually hitting a wall, eventually having to try things. And then they find that thing and they're like, oh my gosh, I wish I did this seven years ago. I wish I did this 10 years ago. I've been yeah. struggling for so long. So that's the way that I would think about it. Yeah. And it's a great question. And into the barrel, you're, you're, I know you're a customer, so you should check out my cousin, Rob Shanahan. He's not actually my cousin, but we have the same last name. So I call him my cousin and, and I enjoy calling him my cousin. Um, rock photographer, amazing access. Uh, could tell you could tell you some of the ins and outs of that business. By the um, way, well, can I share my screen really quick and show the custom artwork strategy? Yeah, see if you can see if you can pull it up. I don't know if it knocks mine out or if it allows you to have one and me have one at the same time. Um, I'm answering a question while you figure it out. I oh, know, good, you got it. There. Close pop up. Yep, let's see. Yeah, so if, if you guys type the word "custom" as a comment right now on this post, we will send you this, and you can see it says the custom artwork. Oh, no, 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 no! You got to add it to the stage. Add it to the stage. Add it to the stage. How do you do yeah, that? Down below. Click oh, that. there we go. I see. Yeah, I got you. Show to do this. Do you have to drag it and drop it? No, just click on it, add to stage. You might not be able to do it. I'm going to do it. Okay, yeah, you do it. So you Go. got it? Yeah. Yeah, so you can see here the custom artwork strategy, get an art sale today. So there's a video. I actually did this um, to guide you guys through it. Um, and it gives you exactly uh, the entire process, explain everything. Um, and you can see a bunch of the people that have actually done it. Look at this guy right here, Fred Deal. Hey, I just took Nick's advice from the top of the meeting and sent out an email to my VIP list offering custom artwork. I had a reply in two minutes, $199 that I did not have at 2 p.m. Mountain time today. Thanks, Nick. So check this out. Anybody who's struggling with niche, Simeon, you know, check this out. I know that you've you've tried this. Make sure that you're doing it the right way. Um, and, and guys, if this doesn't work with your audience, then you probably need to be looking at audience, audience building, different audience, growing audience and going in a different direction. Because if you're offering like basically to do anything for your audience and nobody's responding, there's pretty much no buyers that are probably in there, you know, because this is like the ultimate friction removal. Um, 100%. And Lauren Loves a Pain is like, it, it can merch be like the steak. Merch brings them in in a different sort of a way. Right. In a different sort of the way that the, the genius of the merch, you guys, and gosh, I, I was so anti-merch to begin with and boy, did it rip my head right around. The genius of the merch is it's an easy beachhead. Okay. It offers a low friction, low financial commitment, spur of the moment purchase way for someone to reward you for your creativity. And then what happens is. The cell phone case or whatever it is with your art is in my pocket 365 days a year. And I look at my cell phone 500 times a day. So why do you think a cell phone case would be a good piece of merch to sell? I don't know. It's funny. <laughs> That's but such a great point. That's now, such a great point. Oh, I know. And now when it's time for me to buy art, Lauren loves to paint. Who is top of mind? Lauren loves to paint is top of mind because I've been staring at your work. Like 
you know, the sheer amount of money that Nick and I have spent over our careers on ads is staggering. And ads are awesome and they work great. But guess what? Unless you're on Facebook or Instagram or Google on this, I can't get your attention. This, every time you pull that thing out of your pocket or it's sitting on a table or you pull it out of your purse, your your art is top of mind for me. Do you know how hard yeah. that is? Ads don't go there. Let me tell you. You know that you know what's wild about about that is that and I never I, I never thought about this. It's just I mean the the amount of times that we are all on our phones all day long around everybody everywhere, right? Everyone's seeing your phone. So if you sell somebody a calendar at their house, only the people that are at their house are going to see your images on a calendar, which is still good. And that person is going to be reminded of your images every day. That's great. That's great for collectors, right? Um, but the phone, the phone case, the public, it's its the most likely thing that the public is going to see the most, right? Because it's your phone everywhere you're at. You're in like, you're standing in line to buy some tacos, you know, you pull out your phone, which I know you are, we all are, right? And yep. people are going to see that. Like the odds of people actually seeing your art, maybe somebody asks you a question, like that's, that's a real thing. No, oh, is it a real thing? It, it, it honestly like it, you know, oh, well, I, I, I like doing, I like doing coasters or I like doing mugs. Okay. Well, how many cocktails is somebody having in a day? All right. Okay, great. Oh, it's coffee. Okay. Well, how much coffee is people having every day? You know, usually just one, but maybe it's on the shelf. How many times are you picking up your iPhone a day? Let just pull up the screen time report and we'll all audit everyone. Do you know what an average number of pickups is a day? It's like 153. It's like 150 to 170 pickups a day. So, oh, this person's art. Oh, this person's art. So let me ask you again. Do you think it's cheesy to have your art on a cell phone case? I I get infuriated when people tell me. Like the whole, you could not have your art in a more visible location than on the cell phone case. So anyway, that gets me going. Um, so it means like I need to find the steak. You do indeed. You do indeed, my good man. We all do. Uh, we all do. So Autumn's like, I listen to you guys on reels and quick stories. Engagement happened in the first four seconds and seven second reels are the best. Any type of quick reels that you guys suggest. I think the most important thing is to not like get too caught up in any of the tactical stuff. You know, if you were writing a paper, you would want to have a good hook on it, right? Any ad has a good hook on it, a good intro, right? Uh, when you're introducing yourself to somebody, you want to make a good first impression, a good intro. So I find that like the helpful thing to do is try and get people's attention immediately and then you can do whatever you want and then length becomes sort of secondary at that juncture. But don't let it hamstring you into like, you know, this is what I got to make. It's more important to just experiment around with like a bunch of different things that you're doing, um, you know, that that I would say. Um, unapologetic, this is a great one. There are so many people doing art right now that as an artist, I feel difficult to break through. You can't let that nonsense get into your head. That is like, you just called the plumber. Okay, I'm, I just showed up at your door and I'm going to rip that nonsense out of your drain because there's so many of everyone out there. But guess what? Unapologetic. As a result of this thing, there's about nine million more customers you can reach as a result. That's number one. Number two, the stats that are out right now about how substantial a business you can have with a tiny audience is like nothing we've ever seen in the history of mankind. You know, it used to be it used to be Kevin Kelly's 1000 true fans. Now it's like 100. You could have like a solid business with a hundred true fans. So you can't let those, that kind of nonsense get you down. Yeah, there's a lot of other artists, but there's a lot of everything out there. But you have the ability to reach more people than any other time in history. Yeah, right? and, and, and and you know I'm chomping to, to answer this. I don't know if you want to pin it on the screen, um, but, uh, but you guys, I've talked about this before. We, because we have 14,000, you know, painters, photographers, et cetera, at art storefronts, we have had the ability over the last 10 years to see, you know, and, and understand like a broad swath of what everybody does and how they think and all of that. Right. And we talked to many, many, many more artists and photographers. Like we, like, you know, we're talking to you guys right now. And there is one pervasive theme of the whole thing. And that is that there is almost no competition. And you guys are like, wait, what? But there's so many artists and I go to Fine Art America or this website, art.com. And there's so much art that is up there and all of that, right? What we have learned here is that there are so few of you that are willing to take the time to build your own business, to actually put effort in and work, you know, to try to find, uh, you know, your market and to make sales and to do what it takes to build an art business. 
that there is shockingly little competition. And I mean, like eye of the needle, you know, that's the thing that we've, that's the thing that we've learned that it's like, I mean, wh where this came about too, Pat was like eight or nine years ago when we were seeing some guys selling, you know, on the platform and they were outselling like world renowned artists that were on our platform as well, you know? And we were yeah. like, how is this possible? This guy's got 500,000 followers here and he's got an audience and he's been, you know, on a magazine or he's been interviewed or what he's been on TV, whatever it is, right? Like yeah. multiple of these, how is this possibly happening? And when, as soon as you dig into it, you see the whole thing. The guy that didn't have the talent, you know, or I want to say didn't have, a didn't have as much talent um, or didn't have like high expectations, just hustled and just actually did the work. They just actually did the marketing and did the work and they're outselling like world renowned artists. And we're like, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Like nobody, almost nobody out there, even the best artists, the most talented ones that you see that you think are selling a lot, they're not. If they're not doing the work and they're not doing the marketing. And we know that for a fact. We know yep. it for a fact, absolute fact. Okay. And so if you actually, if you actually are willing to commit to just building the business and doing the marketing work and having the right expectations and having the right mindset going into it, you can win. And there's no competition. There's almost no competition. You're, yep. you're the battle, the competition, you guys, let me guarantee you one thing right now, after doing this for as long as I have, I've been in the art industry for 25 years. The only competition you have is against yourself. That's it. You are, it is a battle against you and you alone. And whether you can mentally get through it or whether you're going to quit and give up like everybody else has, you know what I mean? Yep. So when you think about competition, think about yourself and fortify your mind and get ready for the journey and understand what it is. And we'll help you do that. Listen to our podcast, come onto these things. We're trying to help you have the reality. So when you go in, you're like, Hey, I already knew this was going to be hard. I already knew I was going to have to try different subject matter. I already knew I was going to have to do all these different things. I already knew not quitting was, you know, a part of my mindset going into this. You, you see comments like this, like Meredith, you just made my entire day. Okay. Made my entire day. I love, I love teaching about negotiation. And one of the secrets of negotiation is you don't ever drop on price without getting something in return. Okay. And the something in return can be anything. And I was teaching about this the other day and boom, Meredith sold two pieces. And it's so counterintuitive to think because artists are such terrible negotiators. Sorry, I said it. Okay. It's true. But when you're, when you're in negotiation, everyone's tendency is to like, okay, you have a thing, you have a thing for sale for a thousand. Nick comes in. He's like, I really like that piece, but I just can't afford a thousand. Would you take 750? Most artists are like 750. You know what? I really do want to get rid of it. I'll take it. And the minute you do that, there's something that happens psychologically when you give the whole store away for nothing. There's something that happens psychologically and the buyer is like, this is an unworthy kill. It like goes back to like our caveman days or something or like, I don't know, animal DNA. But when you get something in return, i.e., okay, Nick comes in and goes, Patrick, I'll give you 750. I know you want a thousand for that piece. So I'll give him 750 for that piece. And I say, I'll tell you what. I, I would normally not come down like that, but I need this thing out of my garage. My significant other is yelling at me about space. I'll come down, but you got to take it today. Nick, will you take it today? He said, yes. I got him to acquiesce to taking it today. Or you can do the Nick. Well, I don't normally drop like that, but how are you going to pay? How did you want to pay today, Nick? Buy a credit card. Like, oh, credit card. Well, I hate bookkeeping and my credit card is so much easier on my bookkeeping than cash. So if you pay by credit card, I'll take the 750 today. So in both cases, one, I made him at, give me taking it today. In the second, I said, what payment are you going to do? And I told him why that was helping me out. That seems like nothing because you would have taken credit card. You would have taken cash. You would have taken Bitcoin, Venmo, PayPal, an IOU. Okay. But it doesn't matter. They don't know that. And there's psychology in that. And, and you guys will be such more powerful negotiators when you do it. It just, it works 100% of the and time. You, and you think that's nothing, but you don't want them to cool off. And so getting them, it's, you know, to, to take action that day is actually mm -hmm. more important than you think. Yep, 100%. Bugface paints at 800. Been posting two to three reels a week. One slideshow, one static post, 80% of the way there. I love it. Uh, and she also says the free, trial, the free trial is working because she's taking notes during the podcast. That makes my day. 
Um, and I'm glad, I'm glad, Lauren, that you're getting value out of this and that, you know, us being available. Like, we love being available. This is the whole point, you guys. Do you know what changes on the inside? Just more availability. <laughs> because it, it's just it's just more right it's just more and more and more and more and that's just that's just this is what's missing out there right like this is and it's for any entrepreneur you know like just having a website is not enough what's missing is the human element and you know the the day-to-day -day getting over you know a new a new tree falls in your path you got to get over it right the next one falls down you got to get over it this just doesn't it, it never stops and it's a lot it's a lot easier and it's a lot better when you're doing it together, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, yeah, all this stuff is available internally, but it, it's, it's like anything else. Like, oh, I've already been through the niche course. Yeah. Well, go through it again. Right. Because it's, it's instant. It gives you so many new ideas and it's like, you learn, you learn a different, um, you learn a different part every single solitary time. Right. I mean, uh, also I saw, I saw your other comment the the thousand Instagram follower strategy in the vault. Mm -hmm. This is for art storefronts customers only, but Simeon, you got to go do that because I see you're you're talking about audience, and that's that's what you got to go after. Okay. Yeah, and by the way, Meredith, it, the the dollar amounts are like immaterial, right? So you came you came two thousand off, and you sold twenty one k. It's it's just the psychology, you guys. It's just the psychology of not giving something away for free because for whatever reason, that buyer needs to feel like they got what they wanted out of the deal, and and. You guys, you're not going to like this, but I'll just come out and say it. More art is sold through negotiation and discount than is sold at full price. Yep. It's not even close. Not even it's close. Not even close. And, and, that's and by the way, yeah, and that's just a fact. And by the way, once you learn that and then, and then you take our advice on how to price your art, you're prepared for it. You're prepared for it. It sounds like Mer Meredith is prepared for it, right? Like if you set your prices appropriately, what happens is you usually have to raise them from where you have them, okay? And then what happens is, is that you get these offers where you need to negotiate and it doesn't kill your margins because you raise your prices. But guess what else happens lots of times? Some people just pay full price and then you're like, boom, you know? I've got, I've got, another, I've got another two in there, but you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared for these eventualities. You have to be prepared for the fact that more art is sold through negotiation and discount, okay? Nowhere more than art galleries, by the way. And that's just that's just the name of the game, and that's okay. That's okay, right? Um, it's very, it's very, very, very important to understand that. Um, no, you don't. I mean, you don't need to unfollow artist pages. It's fine. Um, you know, it's it's more about just different types of subject matter materials, and then also understand like you're in a great place. It sounds like you're suffering, and you are suffering, and you're meant to suffer. That's just part of the journey. Like <laughs> trying to find the one type of artwork that's going to resonate and is going to hit is a struggle, especially early on. Especially you know what I love about now. Simeon though? I, I don't, yeah. Simeon, I haven't even met you, you know, but I've just in the four or five comments that you've dropped, man, I would bet on you. You're working at it. You are working at it and I see it. And you, you know, you're just, you just keep going. You know, you're an iteration away until you figure it out and you find it. Like you're a worker though. And I'm proud of you. Great job. Yep. Awesome. Uh, Luna Zamora, love it. You do need to watch us more often, okay? Because we're coming with the positivity and the enthusiasms, right? Uh, which is really, really important. But again, you guys, like, you know, this, this is the whole point why we do this because there were no classes in art school, Nick. Yeah, I know. Taught the business side of art. There were no classes in photography school that taught the business side of photography. And guess what classes are sorely needed? A huge, healthy dose of both, right? Where the hell was the education that said, oh, you have a creative talent? Wonderful. Here's how you monetize it, right? Here's how you monetize it. It's so important. It's so, so important, right? Shout um, out to Kim Winberry. You know, love Kim. 3,800 in stickers alone last year she sold, you yeah. know? Um, over 6K last quarter. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well done, Kim. Very, very good. I'm screen. I'm screenshotting for my my file here, so you might need to do some talking for a second. All right, I'm looking at the comments here. Yeah, guys, drop your comments with any questions that you have, because when you see my head turning, I'm just I've got my phone right here, and Pat's got his, and we're just scrolling down looking for comments um, and and the next questions. Uh, Lauren uh, Lauren asks, is there a way to see who visits our website? Um, I don't know how to see this. Yes, uh, if you go to Detective. Go to the jump to menu in the back end and go to detective 
and you can scroll down. You're going to see a lot of um, anonymous people because you don't know who they are, right? They haven't given you their email address. But as you scroll down, you can see people who have ever given you an email address and you can see if they've come back to your website, you know, and visit it again and stuff like that. Don't take it too seriously. Don't, you know, uh, spend a lot of time there. I think that, you know, there's way too much time by artists spent who don't have enough traffic and don't have a big enough audience. And like, that's the top of your funnel. That's where the biggest impact on your business can be. Focus on just getting more and more and more and more people in because that's going to just explode the, the traffic to your website. So that's the most important thing. I would focus on the audience building way more than like the nitty gritty of like, oh my gosh, that was one person that came to my site today and they're a collector. You can't force that to happen. You know, mm -hmm. you just keep marketing and keep being awesome, you know, and get your marketing out there. They're going to see it and, and, and good things will happen. And you just run the strategies, right? Copilot, you're on Copilot. I see that you're, you, you said you're on Copilot. So Copilot's going to do those, that marketing for you you know, to bring people to a close. So just keep doing what you're doing and be awesome. Yep. Um, great question here from Zalia Arts, which is how early can you start putting putting up Mother's Day sales? No one was asking these questions three or four years ago. I'll tell oh, you that. Great question. question. Right? You have to get way, way ahead of sales, guys. And, and we have like a wonderful mental framework for how to think about when you need to be thinking about the promotions for an upcoming thing. And, and, and let's just describe the default artist behavior, okay? Oh, Mother's Day is on Sunday, and this is Thursday. I got to get something going immediately so that we can do something for Mother's Day. What I want you to think about is like the next time you're in Target, the next time you're in Thigh Below, the next time you're in Walmart, the next time certain times Home Depot, any of the big box stores, look at how ahead of time those stores bring out the holiday promo stuff. If you That is when you need to start thinking about getting your sale in the water. That is how far ahead of time you can be because everything you guys, everything that we're attempting to do online as artists, photographers, creatives, trying to sell our stuff is just copy what's been working in the real world forever. These retail stores have this figured out. Like most of the time, our Mother's Day, our Valentine's Day, our fourth quarter Black Friday sales are like already done and wrapped up weeks before most people even start. Most most times wrapped up weeks before because we know we're just following what all the smartest retailers that do hundreds of millions of dollars a year in revenue do. And like, if you think about like, if you go into Target now, Easter is out. Easter's already out, right? Mother's Day will be already out too. Like, Target Valentine's, is a great Valentine's Day was out on January second. Yeah. On January second, they they removed all the New Year's stuff, and Valentine's Day stuff was out on January second. That's how fast. The yeah. retailers are on it. Yep. But yep. guys, this is, it's a, it's, I, I love this question right now because, you know, we, we kind of teased it a little bit at the very beginning that we would talk about it. But like the spring art selling season, you guys, is right around the corner. You got Easter, you got Mother's Day, you got Father's Day. You've got like a bunch of little things that are in between there. This is one of the best times. This is one of the best times, right? So yep. this is the time to like get on your game. You know, if you're thinking about like, you know, taking your business to the next level or starting it or getting going. Like this is a really, really good time. Spring season is awesome. And, and then you get into summer and then you get into the fourth quarter, which is the biggest art selling time of the year. So like we're going, you know, it's, it's, God, can you believe it's almost like we're getting to the end of March here already. Easter's coming right up, you know, in what three weeks or something like that. So oh, yeah. there's always another one. Here we coming. Go. Spring art selling season's right around the corner. So, you know, yeah. that's the way you guys want to be thinking about it though. O C I E Lee. I don't see anyone who advertises more than you two. Fair point. We are uh, we are relentless because you, and, and, and there's a reason, you guys. Like, I I I would not be able to look my myself in the mirror or look my kids in the eyes if I didn't practice what I preach. And it's the same with Nick. Like all day long, what are we teaching you to do? Hey guys, you got to market consistently, and if you do, you'll grow a huge art business. Like if we weren't practicing what we preach, how could we possibly have been teaching all of you guys, encouraging all of you guys, uh, mildly harassing you sometimes like uh, that I do from time to time with the customers? Because I know if you do this consistently, you will win. You know, having a successful art or photography business early on is not about a meritocracy of how good the work is. The best art uh, that's created is not what sells. The best art that gets seen is what sells. Early on, it's a meritocracy on the marketing. 
And that's another one of these things that they don't teach in art school ever. Or they don't teach in photography class. It's the only thing that matters early on. And if you do it and you do it consistently, your business will start growing as well, right? As well. So that's right. what I would throw, say. Throw, throw this screenshot up, just a perfect thing mm -hmm. for exactly what you just said. You see it? Yeah. The notion that you can build a good product and it will create a big company without marketing is one of the biggest misconceptions I've heard. There are a lot of companies with good products that haven't done well. No matter how great your product is, this is the punchline. If you can't get it in front of people, you will lose. Yep. And these are these are all like basic business lessons that somehow just like skipped, you know, the artist community. Yes. And, and, and the first time I learned the best products don't win, the boat, the best products don't automatically win. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was like, what are you talking about? The best products don't win. I mean, you know, like, how is that even possible? And when you actually start learning and you dig into it, it's like, it, I mean, it, it's everywhere. It's like, I mean, the most obvious example is like the cable companies that we've all had to deal with for so many years, right? Like all yeah. these terrible companies. And then you understand why they have these monopolies and they, they, they pay off politicians and they influence laws and law, you know, there's all these things going on, but, uh, but like the best products just don't win. So it, no. that's, that's why when we say that some of the like world renowned talented artists are getting outsold by total unknowns that have like 2000 followers and you just, you wouldn't believe it until you no. saw it. But it's head so scratcher. Funny. You're like, how does this even make sense? How does it make sense? So if, and here's the point, if the talented artist actually did the marketing, they would crush, they would crush that person, you know, yeah. if they did all of it, but they don't, you know, yeah. now, not all of them, but like the, a lot of them don't. And most artists don't, and they don't, they don't market. They don't do what's being said up here. Right. Which is, it's not the best product that wins. It's the best marketing that wins. Yep. Yep. Always has been, always it's will be. Such a right? huge lesson, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's if you can, if if you count the uh, how many eyeballs did you get on your art today? Like every, right. everybody that's listening to this in your head, how many eyeballs did you get on your art today? If you if you did a social media post, you probably can get an idea. You sent out an email, you got an you got an open rate, you've got a you know impressions or reach or likes, however you want to calculate. You could come up with some number. You know, but yeah. you have to understand this is what marketing is. It's this, it's not any more complicated than that. You have to get eyeballs on your product. And like, it, you know, the most caveman way of thinking about it is just getting as many of those as you possibly can, you know, to let good things happen. And that's the whole point of doing outbound marketing and why marketing is the number one problem when we talk about it. It's quantity of eyeballs at the end of the day that need to see your art. Yeah. By the way, this is the loser. This is a scam, says someone after two weeks of trial, right? It's like, th th this guy's clearly in the software business. If you, like anyone, anyone that is telling you that you are going to have a successful art business very easily by some magical formula uh, uh, in two months uh, uh, without having a website or without having to do marketing is a snake oil salesman and you need to run. And there's a lot of them. I mean, I had this wonderful woman on the on my webinar on Wednesday, and she's like, well, "What do you think about funnels?" Because I I I just I, I was on a webinar, and these guys were talking about the funnels and how the funnels go out and get buyers. And I'm like, "Funnels? What are you talking about? Funnels? Like there is what happens when you get someone's attention, and then there is getting someone's attention. The only thing that matters is getting their attention. I don't care about a funnel." I don't care about an upside down funnel, left funnel. You can all have funnels for everybody over a style. You have to get someone's attention. It's the only thing that matters. And unfortunately, there's no shortcut for that. There never has been a shortcut for that. There never will be a shortcut for that. And, you know, some of you guys are saying thanks for the tough love. It's like we want our customers. We want the ones in our ecosystem to win. OK, and we do that by saying, you know what? This is hard, but here's a path. Here's how you do it. We're going to support you every single solitary step of the way when it's hard and it's miserable and you're trying like Simeon was on here earlier today, uh, uh, when things are cooking with gas, right? Like, you know, when you're Meredith and you just sold 21,000 in the last 24 hours, like it, it, it doesn't matter what stage of the game you're in. You need the support. You need to know there's no shortcuts and that's all good. You wouldn't, you'd, 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 you would love it less if there was, you know, like it, it, the, the, the journey and the grind is the whole thing. Um, 
Nick, we got to do final remarks because we're coming up against it on Instagram and it's going to kick us. Uh, we're on the hour mark. So we've been, we just keep going here. We just keep going. All right. So um, what do we got for the final remarks? Go ahead. Yeah. So number one, if you guys want to see all the bells, all the whistles, all the things, everything that we do, if you're like, I don't understand what these art store fronts guys do, you can leave a comment on Facebook or Instagram with the word Zoom and we'll send you a link for the upcoming session. Um, and it's cool too, because if you register for it and you can't attend the thing, they'll send you the replay. Um, Zoom does it automatically, which is which is kind of handy. So that's a great way to find out, you know, who we are, what we do, all the plans, everything else. Um, and we have a huge sale going on this week, do we not? Yeah, we do. Do you want to do you want to briefly talk about that? Well, the, 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 we'll we'll be we'll be very brief about it. But the the big benefit that we have this week is um, the tech assistant. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, we, we, and this goes back to our philosophy too, right? Like why we've yeah. added this is um, we don't believe you guys should be managing your own websites, having to upload stuff all the time, having to do stuff all the time. No. So no. we've at least created something that takes some of that work off your plate. So your website can be managed for you. So, you know, when you sign up, um, uh, we will not only build your website for you, uh, but on an ongoing basis, we will include a tech assistant, you know, that you, when you need to upload some new work or you got to do something, you just get it right in there and they do it for you. Okay. You want to add yeah. a calendar to your website, they'll do it for you. Okay. It's not like unlimited, but there's, there's some constraints on it, but it should relieve a lot of stress and workload of things that are just not moving your business forward. It's just stuff that drains your energy that does, that stops you from doing marketing or things that, you know, painting a new subject matter or taking a new shoot you know, get being in that game of, of, uh, of working on things that are what we call higher leverage activities, meaning when you actually put time into the business, it's on something that will materially potentially raise your sales or raise your revenue potential of your business. Yep. And by the way, I love technology. Sometimes you just point some things out. So Heather was on YouTube and she's like custom. And I'm like, crap it doesn't work on youtube can you can you come on instagram so heather now that you're on instagram leave another comment with custom and i will send that thing directly to your dm box and you and you can get the playbook which is an amazing amazing thing um great session today nick thanks for the time i've got a ton of fun stuff coming up for you guys this week um some conversations with some artists uh we're going to do some real-time consulting and coaching uh on instagram on facebook on uh youtube and you guys can ask some questions and i'm i've actually been pressing one of our longtime uh friends and customers to think a little bit bigger he's he's a fish wall mentality instead of the ocean right now and I, and I will say that to his face because i think he could be way huge but he's stuck in his little world so you guys are going to want to see these things um thanks for all the positive comments though all the comments nick thanks for the time that was rad. really enjoyed it all right see you, see guys. you guys